Hello viewers, welcome back to another video. This one's going to be with this uh, LCYMN uh, 2500 watt power inverter, pure sine wave. Before I even start, I'll say I don't have any issues with this fully, but I will say one of the things I have noticed about it Oh, look here. 123 volts, 61 watts. Why is that, I wonder? Nothing's plugged in. It's, uh, it's unplugged at this stage. It's not shut down, it's just unplugged. So, <clears throat> it seems to me, either this is not accurate, or worse, it is accurate, and it's burning 60 to 75 watts an hour, kind of fluctuating. Um, that's going to add up. It's going to add up quick. If it's doing that on just standby, what happens when you plug something into it? Uh, you know. But... This is why we review our products and we, uh, we do our tests and we understand, you know, what everything actually takes, not what the manufacturer is conning you into saying it takes. Uh, and again, it's completely disconnected from all draws. Uh, it's just sitting idle and uh, that's what we're dealing with. Now that's not a big deal at all uh, for this particular system because this particular system has a 100 amp MPPT charge controller. Um, I do have to increase my solar panels uh, and that's in the making. I've been heckling with myself over exactly what to get and going through some figures there and uh, you know it's a slow process. But I just wanted to make a quick video um, on this power inverter because uh, they are inexpensive. They do work quite well. But again, if this draw is correct and accurate, you're going to have to calculate for that and you're going to have to compensate for that. Uh, in my particular case, uh, hold on. Buried under all of this junk just happens to be 640 amp hours of LifePo 4 battery. And uh, I've done extensive testing. That's uh, very rare do I actually run these batteries down much at all. Um, but I'm still going to be increasing my solar. And as things progress, I have plans to get a few more of these batteries. The good news is, the 320 amp hours was the big boy on the block when I bought my first one at $1,200. Uh, the other second one was at $900. And now that technology has gone up, my next purchase will be $800 in Canadian tender. So, as I procrastinate and uh, bide my time and wait for the, the right timing, the prices are definitely coming into my favor more and more. Aside from that, I just thought I haven't posted anything in a while. I would do a quick video. Uh, this is what I'm currently getting for solar in. Um, the system has been down or without draw for a while. It hasn't been down. It's just I, I haven't put any real draw on it. Right now, the 10.5, 10.6 amps that you see, it will be what uh, this power inverter is now drawing because I'm running two sets of fluorescent lights off of it at this time. But as we scroll through uh, October 23rd uh, 1630 hours I've had 150 watts come in today 
and uh, only 5.5 kilowatt for the month. So for a while, uh, you know, it's just been idle pretty much all month or since I concluded my last big power test when I uh, wore it down. But uh, for 23 days, normally I'll have around 48 kilowatts if I'm uh, actually putting it to work and making it do its job. And it will give me the 48 kilowatts. Uh, however, I still have to add greater solar, and I'll do a video on that after um, when I finally stop the procrastinating and get the panels I want. Other than that, just a quick video to, uh, to show you what the standby power burn for this unit is. You saw the figures, so it is what it is. Uh, I don't disrecommend this. I've ran it right up to 2400 watts and made it work for a couple of hours. Uh, I think I left it there for about four and a half hours, depleting my batteries right down before shutting everything down and just letting the solar power recharge me back to full. That's about all I have for you on this video. Thank you for watching.